we would all love to play a game just like this. These games are few and far between. If you're playing people of the same level of his, as yourself, you're going to basically play stronger opponents who are basically not going to allow you to get this type of position. This game was played against a person who was higher rated than myself, so I got lucky on this occasion. So the idea behind attacking key spaces, um, weak spaces, weak pieces, attacking the king area or the king works quite solidly. But if you're playing a proper longer game where it's really tense, like the next game, how do you work this system into that game? how to attack weak areas weak pieces the king area and the king open in the center attacking the weak pawn with the knight attacking weak pawn in front of the king capturing the piece because the weak only piece that can defend and capture back is the weak pawn in front of the king area attacking the head of the snake the head of the snake is like if you have a pawn chain the pawn that is at the highest further developed down the board is usually the weakest pawn so we strike the head of the snake and it usually does fall quite nicely. If you can access the back of the pawn chain, that also is a weak pawn as well. So we attack a higher piece with a smaller piece, but also an unprotected pawn in front of the king area. The knight has jumped into a square which looks strong, but on the face of it, if our knight takes this pawn is weak because that's the only piece that can take back and we will be grabbing the pawn with the queen so this is why grabbing a weak knight because it's on weak foundation see this quite often especially in blitz matches where knights jump in grab a pawn feeling they're improving their position but if you have a look at the tail of the tape a knight for a pawn and a smaller piece can actually take it back it's not much compensation for the opponent so it's a weak knight takes with the pawn so then they lose another pawn grabbing with the queen but the queen also is targeting another undefended piece gets attacked so we bring it back now and attack the key objective of attacking the king area and the king directly again attacking the weak bishop currently supported by the queen and the king and castling his left the two support they had he had the queen and the king supporting the bishop now there's only one piece supporting so grab now they're looking for an exchange looking materially on the board we can look to exchange down quite nicely so we grab the queen they grab with a check but our knight is defending this area so it's a weak attack from our opponent because we can grab the rook back also targeting an unprotected piece just here it's now defended by the rook but now we can put a two on one with the knight onto this pawn they push down 
now the knight is targeting unprotected pawn here and then targeting unprotected rook supported now by the rook and at this point the opponent resigned so that is appropriate targeting for attacking weak areas weak spaces weak pieces and above all the king or the king area how to develop attacking weak areas weak pieces and attacking the king area and attacking the king when it's not as clear cut in the initial stages of the game so capture the pawn attacking the queen it's weak at the minute developing the knight so at this stage here we're looking at developing pieces and trying to create attacks towards weak areas so the bishop comes out we attack the king drops the pawn so then we come back defend a piece so it's using it in reverse order because you can't constantly attack everything if the opponent then is attacking you you have to look reasonably at defending yourself so so long as you have pieces de um, defended but appropriately defended uh, if it's defended in such a way that the opponent can actually win say a pawn or take the piece that is actually defending the piece then it's not an appropriate defense so we're opening up the dark squared bishop we're actually looking to control these squares with this pawn as well as developing the bishop out at some stage so that's what we mean by attacking key spaces weak spaces yep so these are weak spaces now for the opponent so we're creating that for ourselves castling king safety attacking the weak knight because through the knight is the queen attacking the bishop because weakly supported by this pawn here in front of the king attacking the bishop again with a lesser piece and attacking his knight <clears throat> again a weak piece because behind the knight is the queen so the knight can't necessarily take unless of course they want to lose their queen also attacking the bishop take the weak knight off the board with a potential discover check with the bishop onto the queen still maintaining the attack from the weak knight onto the queen attacking an unprotected well it's unprotected in terms of yes you have a knight there but the knight necessarily can't defend this um, bishop unless of course they want to sacrifice their queen so now looking to put pressure towards the bishop to make a decision to actually capture our bishop so we're just pushing forward to attack a weak piece which is the bishop capturing this weak weak bishop to open up space around their king from this weak pawn next to their king targeting the weak pawn unsupported at the moment and capturing the weak pawn to be in front of the king area capturing the queen to disturb the king area so they can no longer go and castle and again attacking the king area with the knight smaller piece now is on a higher piece which is the knight smaller piece again attacking a weak knight the knight now feels like it's operating a good control in the center but our rooks have identified the weak area for the opponent 
looking to target this area here it's only one piece that is protecting that area at the moment so potentially a smaller piece attacking this bit of interference here the knight will have to move and we can start putting checks on the king and the king area so we push on to the knight knight makes the decision to move so we can put pressure onto the king so this is the start of a definite build up towards the king area with a nice diagonal with the bishop operating to these squares to control that key square there king moves so we're looking to get our other rook up so utilizing the weak position this is weakness for the opponent and strength for us looking to go around the back so the opponent's taking off pawns that uns are unsupported but the big picture is we're looking to put pressure on the king area so if you've got a choice between attacking the king area and keeping pressure on the king area that is the key point to actually doing this type of play whereas if you've got the option of taking a minor piece off the board for the sake of keeping your king safe that's the slight error so we bring the rooks up now so it's almost a few moves away from getting a potential checkmate but you still have to box clever so bringing the bishop through attacking the rook the knight's now wanting to get back into the game realizing the situation is getting a little bit tense towards his king area start putting checks on nice and simple striking the weak areas weak area in front of the king constantly harassing the king to find that better position and then we have a checkmate so that's how you develop your pieces towards attacking key spaces key pieces weak pieces uh, weak areas around the king and attacking the king area it's a nice good build up if you use the psychology of attacking weak areas which are strength areas for yourself then you'll be able to build up good blocking mechanisms as you're going through your games so i think this is a good example of using those blocking mechanisms as attack attacking weak areas yeah so these are weak areas here this pawn is now looking to attack those areas which it's done by moving forward here keeping it simple captures a weak pawn it's only supported by the queen the knight can actually attack the queen knight now is attacking weak areas here weak areas here for the opponent weak areas there yep and weak areas there so controlling those weak areas and the bishop comes through and is attacking so constantly every move that you make have the mindset of i am now attacking a weak area like the basic knight moves here people go well just developing but you're developing for a reason you're developing to control squares yeah so that then you're saying i've got the strength around these areas these are your weak areas that you're going to have to contend with so like bringing the bishop back here it's now defending a lovely piece of ours because you don't want to loosely defend pieces and again pushing this pawn is a matter of weak area here for the opponent weak area there for the opponent so this pawn is controlling these areas so it's not just pushing the pawn out just to push a pawn out it's also developing the let, letting space for the bishop to come out as well castle linking safety and as we know now this is where we start doing the attacks 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 so in your initial opening don't panic thinking well how can i attack a weak area how there's nothing to attack you already are when you're making say your pawn moves in your opening up you're looking at controlling weak areas for your opponent 
how to target the weak areas. So we've already covered the aspect of what each move does in terms of where this pawn is controlling the weak areas for the opponent, making us strong in those areas. So the opponent captured, and then we attack the queen with a lesser piece, and we grab the queen off the board. So now, targeting weak pawn, looking to potentially grab the rook. So the idea is just looking at what is a weak, a weak piece, a weak square, and taking advantage of it. Um, somebody else looking at this particular game would, would probably go, well, no, the strength would have been in controlling maybe this diagonal here or, or controlling this square here with knights and pawns and bishops or, or whatever. You, you'll have your own idea of what a, what a strong movement is by just constantly practicing and I would say um, I'm not an advocate of learning any of the old, you know, Sicilian type things and all that. But if I looked at my games and then looked at what the computer said the opening was, it probably falls in line with what had been done many years ago. But me as a player i don't focus on the fact of if i am doing a sicilian or an idof or anything like that i focus on attacking pieces squares the king area the king as best possible so bring the knight down and it's attacking in my eyes the bishop which is a weak bishop knights hunt the bishops in our mantra because the only piece that can take if he does leave his bishop there is the weak pawn in front of the king. Their knight is coming down looking for this juicy square here so it would be a bit inappropriate for our bishop to be taking here. Unless of course we had a check on the king then it was not appropriate at this time so we need to get rid of this um, knight because if our knight took this bishop he would then take with his knight and he's got a lovely fork on the rook and the king. So a lesser piece attacking the higher piece, can't be wrong. So the knight moves. So now we can take the weak bishop off the board. Targeting now the weak knight. All seems logical and straightforward in my mind as to what is a weakness. So I'm attacking this knight, believing only piece that's behind it is the king so it's stopping the knight from being able to move and if we do take it it's doubling their pawns but before we do that because the knight is still pinned to the king i don't need to rush to actually take the knight off the board looking to open up the dark squared bishop that's what it looks like to actually get an attack onto his knight like this square here but his bishop is there controlling but this pawn is also controlling this square and it's managing this square so it's almost half preventing the knight from jumping into this juicy square here now his bishop's looking to get an angle towards our rook so looking preemptively we bring the pawn up here to manage this square it's managing this square and it's managing this square. So the rook now is looking to challenge this pawn because if our bishop did take, then the rook would take the pawn for free. So we push the pawn up, tripling up the protection area, well, doubling the protection area for this diagonal that the bishop was looking for. So blunting the bishop's attack in the future. So now we can take the knight off the board and double in their pawns and now you see the bishop coming targeting unprotected piece. We can grab the unprotected piece, it's not being protected. 
and now attack the knight. It's given up, looks like the bishop, so we'll grab the bishop. So what is the knight con attacking, controlling? This is a lovely square here because this, this rook is unprotected. It's managing this square here and it's managing a reversal if need be. And then they took the knight off the board. It's going to be a powerful knight. So we double our pawns, so we're up the exchange. Castle. Now we can move our king to safety and attack at the same time and keep attacking until they run out of attacks on the king. So attacking this weak pawn here, the head of the snake, always focus on the head of the snake. If you have the opportunity, take the head of the snake. You will have seen throughout the majority of the games that I've pushed through onto this um, series, I've been attacking the head of the snake and it gives us a world of opportunity. So we grab the king and grab the other pawn and now positioning our rook ready to start attacking their king area, bring the king back, develop the rook up, looking to double up the rooks and they bring their rook across. Now the weak area would be being able to attack here. So we needed to give our king a little bit of space. So it's also knowing what the opponent can do. They're looking at what are your weak areas, understand our weak areas and then try and make them stronger. So we push the pawn up and we can move the king to safety as well as protecting the rook. It does capture and captures with a check we move the king, attacking, aggressive king. At this point now, we're looking at pawn is now controlling these areas here. But it's also defended itself because the knight was actually attacking. But now it's made itself stronger. Take advantage of the weak area and also the strength area now for our rook working its way up, controlling the open file managing the open file so now all we can do is push this pawn up towards getting promotion i don't think there's anything that can actually stop it and that's when the opponent resigned so again that is appropriate targeting and if you saw in the earlier part of the game the amount of targeting of weak areas weak space weak pieces weak squares it helped to then establish a better position for us on the board